Hello guys, today we're going to talk about collision theory, reaction rates, catalysts, endothermic and exothermic reactions. So these were the first four questions on the quiz and they were the lowest mastery standards, but we think that they're pretty simple so we just think we need a refresher to get um, reaccustomed to the language. So let's go ahead and start. So the, for the first part, you don't need to write anything down. You're just going to look at the pictures in the PowerPoint and also on your handout. And then you're going to complete the worksheet after I'm done explaining. So the premise of collision theory. So collisions are when two or more objects collide or run into each other. Collision theory is the theory that only some collisions between particles cause chemical changes. And these effective collisions must have enough energy which is activation energy, to break pre-existing bonds and to form new bonds. So this is when we went into the bio room and were clapping hands with each other. This is when we demonstrated collision theory and reaction rates. So um, particles need to be in the right orientation, so they need to be in the right way, and they also have to have enough energy to be able to make that collision happen, turn into a um, chemical reaction. All right. So the reaction rate, or the rate of the reaction, is the speed of the reaction, and it's defined as how fast or slow a reaction takes place, as you guys know. And it has to do with the speed of a substance's particles. So the faster a particle is moving, or the faster the, the particles are moving in a chemical reaction, the faster the reaction rate will be. And the slower the particles are moving, the slower the reaction rate will be. Many factors affect reaction rate, and some of them were that we talked about. The first thing was surface area of a solid. So this is how big the particles of the reactant are, and it deals with how much space they have in between the particles for the other reactant to react with it. So if you see in this picture, over here the marble chip is all in one piece. This means it has only a little bit of surface area because the outside is where the surface area is. Over here, once I smash the particles into smaller pieces, there is more surface area because there are smaller pieces and we can now have four sides of each particle can be reached. So this side, the side with more surface area, is going to be the one that re reacts faster. And the reason for that is because there will be more area for the reactant particles to come in and react with this other reactant. The next thing we're going to talk about is concentration of a reactant. This deals with the amount of reactant in a set amount of space. So on the left side we have low concentration. This is only a few collisions happening because there's a, only a few particles. So when we have less particles there's going to be less collisions. So think about when we were in the bio room and we only had two or three people interacting and trying to high five each other. On the right side, however, there's a high concentration. So we have 15 or 20 people trying to high five each other all at the same time. That's a high concentration of particles, which is going to involve more collisions. So concentration deals with, um, it's a direct relationship. The higher the concentration, the higher the reaction rate. Next up is temperature. This is our simple one. So temperature is average kinetic energy or dealing with heat or how hot an object is. As we know, when the temperature increases, particles start speeding up, they start bouncing all over the place, and when they do that, they're going to have more collisions, which is going to lead to a higher reaction rate. So on the left side, we have cool gas, which is going to have less um, collisions and less energy. And on the right side, we have hot gas, so we're going to have particles bouncing all over the place, trying to get away from each other, and having more and more collisions. And then the last piece is a catalyst, and that's what we're going to talk about in a second, which also increases reaction rate. All right, before we move on to catalysts, I just want to back up real quick and summarize. So factors that inf affect reaction rate include surface area, concentration of reactants, temperature. And all three of these different things that I just talked about are different factors all increase the reaction rate when they are increased. So when temperature surface area or concentration is increased, the reaction rate increases. And on the same token, anytime temperature 
surface area or concentration is decreased, it's going to decrease the, con the um, reaction rate. Next up are catalysts. So catalysts are substances added only to increase the reaction rate. First, we need to know what activation energy is. So as a reminder, activation energy is the minimum amount of energy needed to initiate or jumpstart a chemical reaction, and it's also referred to as E sub A, right here. So this is a reaction pathway that is shown, and we have potential energy over here um, and reaction pathway down here. We have reactants on the left side as usual and our products on the right side. The difference between this part of the reactants and the top of that hill, this is called the activation energy. And in order for the uh, chemical reaction to, to be jump started or to be started and really go into a, a real chemical reaction, the activation energy needs to be fulfilled. So what that means is we need to have enough activation energy to get to the top of this hill and then be able to then go on with the rest of the reaction. So normally, high activation energies are associated with slow reactions. So on the left side here, we have a high hill. This is like our roller coaster example that we'll see in a second. When we have a higher activation energy, this is the energy needed to jumpstart a reaction, not the energy we have. So high activation energy means we're going to put in a lot of energy to be able to get to the chemical reaction. On the right side, we have lower activation energy. So this little spot right here, this B, that is the activation energy required to jumpstart this chemical reaction. This means that it's going to take a lot less energy to get the right reaction started, um, which means it's going to be a lot quicker and easier to do. So anything that can be done to lower the activation energy is going to speed up the reaction because it's going to make it easier to get over that hill. Next, we're going to look at these two examples of roller coasters. So on the left side, we have a really tall roller coaster. It's about 400 feet tall. And then on the right side, we have a wooden roller coaster that's only about 150 to 200 feet tall. So as you guys can see, the one on the left is much higher, which means that there would be a lot more activation energy needed for the car to get all the way up to the top to then be brought down by gravity on the other side, which is, our, is you know, representing our chemical reaction. On the right side, we have a low hill, which means that there's not going to need as much activation energy to get this reaction jump started. So, that means the one on the left is going to be slower than the one on the right. And again, that's because it takes more energy to get to the top of this one, which means it's going to go slower, and it's going to take less energy to get to the top of this one, which means it's going to go faster. Think about yourself running in a straight line or running up a really steep hill. Which one's going to take more energy? The one running up a steep hill, right? So that's going to take you a lot longer than it were, would to just run down the hallway. So next up are catalysts. So catalysts are very nifty. They're substances that speed up the reaction rate, and they lower the, the amount of activation energy needed. So they lower the, the amount of activation energy needed. Not the amount of activation energy that it has, but the amount that we need. If you look over here on the right side, we have a diagram. The blue part is uncatalyzed, which means that there's no catalyst, and the red part is um, where there was a catalyst, uh, catalyst involved already. So as you can see, there's a huge difference in activation energy between the blue and the red hills, which means that the activation energy has been lowered from the catalyst. Catalysts offer an alternative pathway for the reaction. So in class I talked about this. I said, say you have a house and a school that are two blocks away from each other, and you go down to the right and down to the bottom to get to your school, but then one of your friends tells you that there's actually a park in the middle of your house and the school that you can walk through that's a really safe and nice park to walk through, and when you do that, it cuts down the reaction time, or in this case, the amount of time it takes to get to school. That's like a catalyst because it offers an alternative pathway and it allows you to have less energy but still make that reaction happen, so it lowers your activation energy needed. And the most important thing about a catalyst is that it is not used up or consumed in a reaction. So it's not really a reactant, and it's not really a product. It goes in in the beginning with the reactants, but it's going to come out with the products, as you can see in this diagram, and then it's going to be able to be used again by a different reaction. So that's the great thing about catalysts. They aren't actually used up. 
All right. I bet you're tired, but we have t one more thing to talk about, endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions. So endothermic reactions are reactions that take in energy or heat from the surroundings. So this is what it looks like. It kind of looks like our activation energy diagram because it does take some activation energy. But endothermic reactions involve a big hill, a lot of activation energy, energy that's in the form of heat. So endothermic means in heat or heat going in. So we need to put heat in to be able to have an endothermic reaction. Two examples of this would be ice melting. So the heat from the room or the heat from the sun melts the ice, which is why it's endothermic. And then another example is an ice pack. So an ice pack actually um, helps your arm cool down by removing the heat from your arm, in this case, um, in this picture. So that's why after a little bit your ice pack feels hot because it's taking in heat. It's taking in the heat from your body. Last up are exothermic reactions, which are chemical reactions that release energy in the form of heat. So we have only a little bit of activation energy needed, and then we have a big drop off in the form of energy or heat that's being released to the atmosphere or the surroundings. So energy is being given off by a reaction. Two examples of this are fire, so something burning, and then also the instant hot packs that you crack and they become hot all of a sudden. That heat is coming from the reaction. It's not coming from heat that you put into the reaction. It's coming from the reactants making a product that is hot. So this is exothermic because it gives off heat. All right, so go ahead and work on your worksheet and good luck.